What is the greatest comic book movie trilogy of all time? Find out in this video. What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. So today I'm ranking all of the comic book movie trilogies that I've seen. This ranges from the MCU to Marvel in general to DC. So before I get into this thing, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below your favorite comic book trilogy as well as your ranking of these trilogies and subscribe and hit that notification bell. I am so close to hitting my goal of 75,000 subscribers here on the channel. It would mean a lot if you guys could help me get there. Without further ado, let's dive into this ranking. So coming in dead last for me is the Wolverine trilogy. Now this is an interesting one because we start out with X-Men Origins Wolverine, which is easily perhaps the worst X-Men film we've ever gotten to date. I enjoyed it when I was like eight years old or like 10, whenever the movie came out. Looking back, that movie is flawed heavily. There's a little nostalgia there because I remember having the DVD and watching it in like my portable DVD player growing up during like car trips. But man, is that movie bad. It does not hold up. In fact, it also confuses the X-Men canon and timeline to an unforgivable degree almost. So that movie is really bad. Then you've got the Wolverine, which I never loved. Like I remember seeing that in theaters back when it came out and I haven't visited it since then. It's got a really cool opening scene and there is some awesome action but it sort of falls off in the third act and was never that memorable to me but the trilogy's capped off with Logan which is a top two X-Men movie for me I mean it is incredible it was Oscar nominated for the screenplay it was a beautiful send-off to this character but also dark as hell we finally got to see this R-rated Wolverine where he is just going full berserker by the end of the movie it's Hugh Jackman's best performance as the character and it was an emotional ride it definitely gets better with each entry but I never revisit the first two films which is why it's at the bottom as much as I love of Logan. This placement is based on the fact that I never go back and visit those other two movies. Next is the Ant-Man trilogy. Now, a lot of you are probably like, Ant-Man over the Wolverine trilogy? Yeah, all three Ant-Man movies are better than Origins Wolverine, and I would watch any of the Ant-Man movies over the Wolverine movie. I know Logan's better than the entirety of the Ant-Man trilogy, but Logan is weighed down by those other two films, unfortunately. In terms of the Ant-Man trilogy, the first film is delightful. It's this heist movie in the MCU. It's funny. It's one of the more underrated MCU flicks. Ant-Man and the Wasp, like I've said in recent videos, is the clear weak link in the trilogy, but it still has its fun elements. Obviously, it's like this big chase the entire movie. The post credit scene is what everyone went to see the movie for so that we could see how it's gonna tie into Avengers Infinity War. Or more so, what was Ant-Man doing during the events of Avengers Infinity War? We find that out in the post credit scene as it ties right into Avengers Endgame. And then of course, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is the most divisive movie in this trilogy and one of the more divisive MCU movies in general. I don't really know many people who enjoy this one. I'm in the minority here and I know that. I had a blast with it. I think Kang is one of the more menacing villains we've had in the MCU and they're definitely setting him up to be that prominent big bad villain, but this was a family story at its core and it had those fun space adventure elements to it. I dug this movie. I think it definitely gets way too much hate, but it's a trilogy I would watch over the Wolverine trilogy. Next on my list is going to be the Iron Man trilogy. Now the first Iron Man, like I've said, this is an all-timer for me. It's my third favorite MCU movie. It's one of my favorite comic book films and it is a perfect origin for this character. The second movie I got a lot of nostalgia for. It's the first MCU movie I saw in theaters. It has some kick-ass action, notably during the whole Monaco race scene, plus the final battle with like Tony and Rhodey back to back just destroying everything that comes in their path. That was awesome. It's too loaded with like multiple villains and storylines, you know, trying to set up the Avengers, the introduction of Black Widow. It's doing a lot, but it's got some of the most iconic phase one moments, or that's the Black Widow hallway fight or Tony's suit up scene. Multiple moments that you can go back and rewatch in clips. So I think it gets way too much hate. And the trilogy's capped off with Iron Man 3, which is the weak link to me, surprisingly. A lot of people have this one pretty high on their MCU rankings. Was never my cup of tea. Never fond of the Mandarin twist. Aldrich Killian. Pretty weak villain, if I'm being honest, and it's just one movie that I never go back to rewatch that much. Tony is so disconnected from Iron Man in this film, it feels, and it just didn't do it for me, making it the least rewatchable of these three, but I still find enjoyment with all three of these movies, just to varying degrees. Number six on my list is going to be a trilogy I haven't revisited in a while. I know that it's better than the ones I just talked about, and that is the original X-Men trilogy, consisting of X-Men, X2, and X-Men The Last Stand. X2 is the film that gets the most praise on this list, and I need to revisit that one. I remember the opening with Nightcrawler being badass and then we get a lot more William Stryker backstory on like Wolverine and how he actually came to be so that was cool but it's one of those movies I gotta rewatch. the first X-Men I vividly remember it's not the best you know it's kind of responsible for starting up this whole comic book movie craze though that and like Raimi Spider-Man which we'll talk about later but this movie was eh it's not one I go back to and rewatch all that much and then the third X-Men film is fine I think that it also gets slammed with hatred I was like six or seven when it came out so I didn't see it in theaters but I thought you know it was probably the weakest of the bunch but it had its enjoyment 
enjoyment value. They did the whole Dark Phoenix storyline route. They kill off some characters that I loved, and I was like, oh, that's a little unfortunate. But it was a bit of a lackluster finale to this trilogy. I'm gonna rewatch all the X-Men films before the next Deadpool, and maybe even sooner. I'm way more familiar with the newer X-Men films, like First Class, Days of Future Past, but there's technically four entries in that series of films, so that's why it's not on this list. Coming in at number five for me is the Captain America trilogy from the MCU. The first Captain America film's a solid origin. It's a little run-of-the-mill at times. It has Red Skull, who is a generic as hell villain, but it definitely explores Captain America and his youth, how he came to be, and it shows his origin really well, both with his relationship with Bucky, which is like a key element to the character, but of course the whole romance between him and Peggy ends up being like the emotional crux at the very end of the film. Winter Soldier, overrated, but I still really, really like it. I don't think it's the greatest comic book movie ever, like many people claim it to be, but it does have some badass action. The Russo brothers were introduced to the MCU here in terms of directing. It gave us more Bucky, more Cap, gave us Sam Wilson. The list goes on and on. It's also where the quote on your left was born, so I have to tip my hat to that. But it's definitely got some dope action, notably the highway fight scene. It's just a movie that I personally don't love as much as everyone else. Captain America Civil War is the gold standard for Captain America movies, and I know it's kind of cheating because it's like this Avengers 2.5, as it's been called. But the way that it handles conflict, you know, Team Cap versus Team Iron Man, I'm constantly like questioning my thoughts. I'm like, wait, who do I actually side with here? What's going on? But it gave us Black Panther in a badass intro, it gave us Spidey in the MCU after all the years of waiting, and all around Civil War is a perfect Captain America movie, making it the best of the trilogy. This is another one of those trilogies where each entry gets better, in my opinion. That's how you know you've got a pretty good trilogy on your hands. But coming in at number four for me is the MCU Spider-Man trilogy, the Homecoming trilogy, the No Way Home trilogy, whatever you want to call it. This gave us Spider-Man in the MCU, and the first two films receive a lot of backlash because people say, oh, Tony Stark plays too much of a role. Spider-Man just Iron Boy Jr. All these different things, and I never understood that. And here's why. If they went the Uncle Ben route yet again, that would be the third time we'd seen it in the span of a decade, I'm good. Within the MCU, Iron Man is like this role model figure to him, and it works. They introduced him in Civil War, Iron Man recruited him, so of course he's gonna sort of look up to Tony Stark during his time in the MCU. I never understood why people got so up in arms about that. I know that it's not, you know, the fundamentals of Spider-Man. Uncle Ben in that relationship is a lot bigger, but the MCU just took a bit of a different route, and it still works. It has the coming-of-age feel. It captures what Spider-Man should be, and each film, he suffers more and more consequences, ultimately losing Aunt May and No Way Home and really suffering, having the other two Spider-Men from other universes having to come and get him back on his feet. This trilogy has some of the best MCU villains with Vulture, Mysterio, and of course all of the iconic Raimi and Tasm villains coming back in No Way Home. Homecoming is a top 10 MCU movie. Far From Home is one of the more overhated MCU movies. And then of course No Way Home is a movie that we all experienced on the big screen and will pretty much cherish forever. This is a trilogy that gets way too much hate in my opinion. Just because it's not the Raimi trilogy or the Tasm movies doesn't make it bad. I actually think some of the movies from this trilogy are better than Toby and Andrew's movies. Call me crazy. Next on my list is the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. This is a classic comic book movie trilogy. The first Spider-Man film is my favorite of the bunch because of Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin. He carries this movie. I mean, the man's just throwing out iconic quotes left and right. Harry and Peter's relationship is explored. You got MJ in the picture here. It is a classic comic book movie that I grew up watching and it captures Spider-Man, I would argue to say better than any other Spider-Man movie we've seen in live action. Then we got Spider-Man 2, which many say is the greatest Spider-Man film of all time. I disagree. I still really enjoy this one, but I do think it's a slight step down from the first one, which I know is sort of a hot take. Obviously, Doc Ock, you know, played by Alfred Molina, an incredible comic book movie villain, and it gives us the whole train sequence, which is just riveting stuff. And then Spider-Man 3 rolls around, and that's the clear weak link here. You know, you can really see the studio interference. There was no need to have Venom in this movie. You could have just gone the Sandman route, made him the main villain, and we all would have been better for it, because he is so great in this movie. Like, the scene when he's trying to grab his daughter's locket breaks my heart every single time. This is also the most memeable of this trilogy. Bully Maguire was given to us, which is a gift in and of itself. It's flawed, it's a little too cheesy at times, and it's damn sure too long for its own good. But it is an enjoyable movie on rewatch that I think has gotten way too much backlash. If you go back and watch the movie now, it's pretty damn entertaining. My runner-up is the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy, which feels good to say because Guardians 3 just came out and capped off this entire trilogy. The first Guardians film, classic MCU. I've said this before, and I really want to hit home this point. I feel like it's one of those movies that everyone has seen, even if they're not an MCU fan, because you don't have to watch all the other films to understand it. It's a standalone great space adventure that gives us this unconventional family that shouldn't work but ends up coming together and we all fall in love with them over the course of the movie. But then we roll into volume two and that's a film I have an interesting relationship with because I originally liked it in theaters and I didn't rewatch it for years and started to hate on it but this recent rewatch really re-sparked a love for the film. I think Ego is a great villain. It's got a better soundtrack. The action and humor are turned up to a hundred as compared to the first. It still falls a little flat for me in like the first 15 to 20 minutes as we're kind of jumping all over the place with the Saw 
sovereign and then ego gets introduced. It's a lot to take in pretty early on in the movie. However, I still appreciate it and it gives us a really heartbreaking finale with the death of Yondu and one of the sadder moments in the MCU. I mean, the whole like funeral for him, it breaks my heart. Then we roll into Guardians 3 and this is the best of the trilogy and a top five MCU movie for me. Never in a million years could I have crafted or envisioned a better finale for this group of characters. I felt overwhelmed with joy and happiness, but it was also this mix of a bittersweet feeling. There's one scene, you all know by now what it is. It blew my mind. And it's the coolest shot MCU action sequence for sure. The movie's pretty damn funny in my opinion. It's quotable. Everything I love about the Guardians in this film is at the forefront. We really explore the trauma that Rocket Raccoon went through. All around, this is a wonderful trilogy of movies and easily the best MCU trilogy. However, the best comic book movie trilogy of all time is the Dark Knight trilogy. Christopher Nolan knocked it out of the park with this thing and for years to come, this will probably be the top dog in terms of comic book movie trilogies. Batman Begins is a damn great origin story that's told in the Christopher Nolan way as some events are somewhat out of order and we have to put the pieces of the puzzle together along the way early on, but it all comes together so well as we see Bruce Wayne return to Gotham as Batman. The Dark Knight many regard as the best comic book movie ever made and I'm not going to argue with it. It's definitely in the conversation. A lot of that's due to Heath Ledger's Joker. Rest in peace to a legend. He posthumously won the Oscar and rightfully so. He instilled fear in myself and pretty much everyone else the first time they watched this movie. He's become so iconic as well. People quote him, you know, why so serious? You want to know how I got these scars? There are dozens of quotes you could pull from this character and you've also got Two-Face in this movie. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become a villain. The way that Joker manipulates him and just everyone in this film, it's masterful. I think the first two acts are stronger than the third, but all around this movie is amazing and deserves all the hype that it gets. And then of course you got The Dark Knight Rises, one of the more divisive movies in this trilogy and one of the more divisive Batman films. People either love this thing or hate it. I absolutely love it. In fact, the pit scene where Bruce Wayne climbs out of that pit and everyone's chanting, that's a scene that I watch just for fun on YouTube randomly. It never fails to get me hyped and I will literally be on my feet with chills by the end of it. Bane is an incredible villain. He's not as great as Heath Ledger's Joker, but he's in the conversation of an all-time great comic book movie villain. He's a menace physically and the scene where he just breaks Batman's back terrifies me. I feel like no one talks about the opening of this film, like the opening of The Dark Knight. Everyone always talks about that, but the opening of The Dark Knight Rises might be more impressive in terms of the way they shot it, where they like deconstruct the plane in midair and they kidnap the doctor. That is so impressive. People were doing Bane's voice for years after this movie came out. I remember like the school year after everyone was just going, oh, I'm super bad. <laughs> And the final moment of this film sends chills down my spine. It's a perfect trilogy, and again, I don't know if any comic book movie trilogy will ever top The Dark Knight. But that's my ranking of all the comic book movie trilogies that I've seen. Let me know down below your ranking and your outright favorite comic book movie trilogy. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe and hit that notification bell to help me reach my goal of 75,000 subscribers here on the channel. I'm so close, it would mean a lot. But thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you guys later.